What's up, everyone? This is Danita Booty Bands, and today we're going to learn three ways on how to improve your results with by balancing your hormones. Booty Bands and Barbells helps busy women sculpt and tone their bodies in just 15 minutes a day through our physical products and our one-on-one -on -one coaching. And I thought this was a very interesting topic, and I'm so glad I have Cindy O'Brien here today because she's going to help us, as she's always helped me. She's always been a very dear friend, and you know when you have those friends in your life where you're always feeling like they're always up leveling you meaning like they're just giving you more knowledge than what you had before and you always just leave like huh oh, I'm a better person because I hung out with you That's how I feel about you <laughs> Shots. <My friend. laughs> and uh, we always have these like really awesome nerdy conversations about random things just you know whether it's a car drive or just those random check-ins or whatever it is and so one of them was recently about hormones, and um, she brought this up into my life. It has absolutely helped me, and then also the women within the community, which is starting to actually ripple effect and create not only with women, but then it goes into their children and their friends and et cetera. And this effect is really beautiful to kind of witness and sit back and watch. So we wanted to jump on today and just share with you what we've learned. And so, Cindy, I wanted to ask you, how did you kind of start getting into hormones and what really created that? Why do I need more knowledge about it? Yeah. So um, anytime I've learned anything about health and fitness, no one can just give me a meal plan or give me a workout without me saying, why am I doing it? I'm just that type of person. I have to understand the background in order for it to click and really make sense. And to make it a habit, I have to understand the background with it. So I've always kind of dug into things. Like I'll I'll take the nutrition plan and I trust you, but then I'll go home and I'll read about it and I'll figure things out myself. Especially because there's so much knowledge in this world and conflicting information with social media and so many influencers and different opinions. You can get a lot of conflicting information. So I think it's really important for anybody to do their research, take what your coach says and see how it works for you. I like that. I'm going to intervene. I, the reason why I think that works so well of knowing the why is because you're a lot more into it mm -hmm. to actually put the effort in. If you don't know the why and you don't really know the outcome, I feel like there's a lot less effort, but keep going. I yeah. love this. And I also noticed something again with like social media and even before social media exists, like if you were an 80s baby or 90s girl, we grew up with like magazines or um, infomercials and there wasn't really a way for us to pick and choose what got pushed on us. It was like whatever the media picked. And there was so much at that time about women like shrinking themselves and teaching you to really be in resistance with your body. Like everyone remembers the slim fast commercials and now there's like the appetite suppressant lollipops and things like that. We're taught that hunger is actually a bad thing, which doesn't make any sense. It's natural. It's primal. We're supposed to be hungry. Like why are we being taught not to feed ourselves? So I had a really hard time in high school. Um, because I wasn't one of those girls who was born with a super fast metabolism. And then after they have kids, they're like, oh, shoot, I need to learn about this. I was just gifted with this beautiful body my whole life. Mine was it started back in high school that I realized like, OK, I gain weight. Great. So as I got older, you know, I I learned about meal plans. I got a meal plan and I started working with a trainer. I started taking group fitness classes and I did see changes in my body for sure. But it felt like it only went so far and then it stopped. And I'm like, why are some people just able to jump into fitness and just shred up and look amazing? Whereas for some people, it looks like maybe it's actually harder. So I figured there has to be more to it than just diet and nutrition or diet and workouts. Like there's got to be more pieces to the puzzle. And I found that there's actually a lot of them. So if you're also a corporate woman or a businesswoman and you're really busy and on the go, these are really crucial factors that will influence your body composition and your results a lot, which is another big reason I dug into it. I am in the corporate world. I work in IT on the passion for fitness and everything on the side. Um, but I saw this happening to so many women that they start working and all of a sudden things are slipping. And part of that is, of course, we're busy, so we don't have the time. There's that story. Um, but there's also like what's happening to our body composition on the inside, too. So I found the three big things. So have you ever noticed if you're not getting enough sleep, what happens? Oh, man, I would say 
I mean, I'm super lethargic the whole day, right? I feel like my diet goes off and I feel like I'm obviously not myself and then I don't want to do a workout because then I don't want to injure myself because I don't feel like I have energy. So So energy is a big one and that's like the most obvious. It's like, oh, I didn't sleep. I'm tired. I don't want to go work out, right? But there is actually a lot that's happening in our deepest sleep cycle. So in our deepest uh, REM cycle, Um, that's when our body is producing leptin. That's the hormone that makes us feel satiated and full and tells us to stop eating. Um, And it's also producing our anabolic hormones. And those are the ones like testosterone, which women need, and human growth hormone. Those are the ones that are helping your muscles build back stronger and speed up your metabolism and burn fat. All of those hormones are actually produced in our deepest sleep cycle, So if we're not going into enough sleep cycles, if you're cutting yourself short, if you're not sleeping enough hours, you're actually not getting the hormones that you need to build back stronger. So that could be a huge reason that you're doing the workouts, that you don't feel like you're getting results fast enough. I would say first thing, check your sleep. How many hours are you getting a night? You hear testosterone, you're like, well, I'm not a dude. <laughs> oh, immediately, immediately. And I think some people can obviously lock up when they hear that, like, no, not me. I'm trying to look feminine and I don't need testosterone. But what I learned and when I hired a coach back in the day um, to do a bikini competition, he had me eating more. And it was very important to get my sleep out. He made that be a very strict schedule there. And what he taught me was actually eating to build that muscle and then also to lift more weights than I ever had in my life. And so to me, it's become my best friend is really getting that sculpted and toned body that as women, we're all looking for. And so it's very interesting as you bring up the sleep. Um, So tell us a little bit more about sleep and why that's so. So you're saying it's essentially what's going to help build that muscle, which ultimately, what does that do? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, when you're asleep, that's when you're going into rest and recovery. So a lot of people don't realize that when you're working out, you're actually breaking down your muscle and coming back stronger. That's the stuff that happens in your sleep. That's like the building the booty, building the biceps and triceps and the abs. Like you break it down for it to come back stronger. So you have to rest in order for that to happen. Otherwise, you're just breaking things down. You're super tired and you're sluggish and your body's like, give me a break. Give me a break. I just want to come back. For sure. Um, But yeah, so if you're not sleeping also, like the things that we don't see happening behind the scenes are those hormones that are going to help us build. So we absolutely need that. Otherwise, we're just breaking things down. So let's go to number two. So I hear this often that we're so stressed out. So how is that affecting hormones? Yeah, again, and we think like stress, push yourself harder, go further, you'll do more, you'll get more done, like go the extra mile, but it can actually really inhibit you. So what I always tell people is where does your stress come from? Like, look at your list. What can you ask someone else for help on? What can you outsource? Can you ask your partner? Can you ask your family members? Can you ask your friends? Can you hire a a helper, you know, a cleaning person? Whatever it is, like, get the stuff off your plate. Um, Because your stress hormones, these are the survival things. These are like the fight or flight. Um, And basically what happens is if you're super stressed out, your body feels like it's in survival mode. So it actually spikes your hunger because it doesn't know, like, when am I going to eat again? Survival, eating, being satiated. So it all goes hand in hand. So if you're very stressed out, um, your adrenal glands are releasing cortisol, adrenaline, everything that makes you really, like, high alert and, like, ready to tackle anything. Um, But it also makes you very hungry. And that is also one of those catabolic hormones. So catabolic are the hormones that break things down. So again, we talked about working out, breaking down the muscles. And the anabolic ones are the ones that build it back up. Yep. So what you're doing, if you're not getting enough sleep, you're not getting the hormones that are helping you build. And if you're very stressed, you're getting the ones that are breaking things down. So you're working so hard to eat right and working so hard to work out, but you're not giving your body the capability of actually coming back stronger. Yes. And it's making you more hungry and not feel full. Absolutely. So that's a huge one. So that was a big reason that I decided to chill out on the coffee because I love coffee, like waking up in the morning and having my moments and having like a nice smell of coffee. It's just really like comforting. So there's a ton of different replacements you can do. We were talking about this. Let's go into some of those replacements because yeah. some people they're like, oh, but I, I love my coffee, right? And so, 
So um, I'll share with you, with you some of my replacements that I've been able to find that for me, I've been able to also see a lot less mood swings during my time of the month when I actually have a lot less coffee. Um, so I can clearly see why this all makes sense now as to why um, caffeine affects the hormones. But for me, I like London fogs. And I'm just going to explain it really quickly. Basically what it is is it's a um, a earl gray tea mixed with a lavender tea and you just add hot water to those and then all you have to do is add steamed milk on top if you like to have a little sweetener go ahead and add a little honey or whatever but that's something i've been addicted to but what about you yeah so i just i went to my local health food store i just walked in like i don't know what i'm doing here just gonna find something i went over to the coffee replacement section and they have it's like a, a powdered dandelion root and it's just like this brown powder so I do the same thing. I steam some oat milk, almond milk, whatever it is, like a little bit of sweetener, stevia, and add that. And it it does the same thing of just that like morning moment before you jump into work. You just want something comforting. It's like comfort food. Yeah. Um, but it's really good. And the other thing that's great is there's brands like Four Sigmatic and other ones that make uh, mushroom blends, which are really awesome because they help with brain function. So instead of getting the jitters, like if you ever notice like a fluttering in your heart after coffee, I was noticing that big time and it was causing massive just anxiety for me. So I realized I was having way too much coffee. So the moment I switched um, to something else, just to take the place of it, to keep in the habit of having that morning moment so I didn't feel deprived, but instead swapping it with something else that actually helps with brain function instead of just giving you jitters. So as you're talking about stress, what I've noticed about caffeine is it amplifies whatever you're feeling. So if you're feeling stress, I almost feel more stress. When I'm feeling anxiety, it, it, an, it enhances the anxiety. Yep. That's what I have really, really noticed about it. So that's what's, that's what's great. I love that. Yeah. I noticed that too in myself, and this is, I think, how we got on the topic in the car too, was I was noticing a pattern. I was looking and seeing three days before my cycle starts. I was feeling like extreme, um, just really depleted, really depressed, really anxious, and it didn't feel normal. Like there was nothing in my life necessarily that was causing it because there's natural stress when something happens in our lives. Like someone gets hurt, you run out of money, you need to give to me, like things happen in life. So stress isn't always bad or anxiety is always bad. If life's happening, like you're gonna have it. It's when nothing is wrong, but everything feels wrong. That's when you're like, okay, what's happening? Mm -hmm. And that's what I noticed with me is I was like, I'm so upset, but nothing happened in my life. Interesting. So, and then, so I looked at where I was on my birth control pack. So I'm like, okay, it's every time I'm three days out, I'm freaking out. So then the next month I realized, I'm like, okay, I have three days left and sure enough, like I went into this little like rut. So, okay, this is definitely hormonal. I can tell the difference between life happening and like an imbalance. Yep. So that's when I said, okay, I need to figure out how to naturally balance this myself first before I go to any other kind of resource. I want to take power into my own hands and know that I can trust my body instead of just numbing this with like an antidepressant or whatever it might be. Okay, this is the whole thing of partnering with your body. The hunger we feel, the sadness we feel, it's supposed to be there. So fighting it, numbing it, suppressing it isn't always the answer. There, I think there's a time and a place for everything. So nothing against that. But I don't think we should always be numbing every feeling and- Absolutely not. Yeah, you're supposed to have them. That's what being a human is. And then you listen to it and you adjust your life towards it. Because when we listen to our bodies and make our body our best friend and trust our body, so much more opens up for us. And you're not reliant on anything outside of yourself after that. Yeah, let's list, let's list a few because I, I would agree. And for those that are listening might be like, oh, how do you trust your body? What does that even mean? Especially when you've been running to ibuprofen every single time you have a headache. Yeah. So let's just go through a few just a quickly and then we'll go to the number three. But for example, headaches for me, instead of just running to ibuprofen, I actually start to drink more water. And for me, that's my answer. So I want to see if anything else signals. Why is just talking to you? <laughs> Another one is obviously if um, I'm having cravings, I realize that instead of just running over to the, the craving, my body is actually deficient in a vitamin, mineral, or nutrient. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh, who knew? So just amazing things that like just just to start there but you guys it's unreal that when you start to really shift your way of thinking and stop grabbing the numbing devices and really start to tune into what your body really needs who big shift yeah, will happen 
cool yeah so chocolate it's like you're not having enough magnesium that's greens like you know so there's little things like that um that's on the hunger topic we're taught to fight our hunger all the time totally diet 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 fight it fight it fight it suppress it makes you more hungry more grumpy all the things when you could just grab something healthy hanger is a real thing guys (laughs) i just had it like two days ago yeah we get that a lot okay number three so let's dive into the next one so this one was another one that i um cut back on i wouldn't say any, i never drink but i don't drink very much now um because i noticed the day after i would have this kind of the same feeling that caffeine was giving me a little different but just like this nervousness um as we know alcohol is a depressant so that's one side of it um the other thing that alcohol does if you're trying to build strength um you're trying to build like lean muscle anything fat burning right um Alcohol actually prevents your body from going into protein synthesis, which is when we break down our muscles from working out, it inhibits your body from actually coming back stronger. So you just do this hard workout to break things down and then it doesn't come back stronger. So it's like you're canceling out the workout altogether. So that was another really big one too that can throw off your hormones. It's also um, completely empty calories full of sugar and that spikes your blood sugar, um, which again throws off everything including your estrogen including your testosterone and everything that's really helping us um fight aging and build that lean muscle that's going to be burning the fat which is our metabolism which is she said burning your fat that's so important you guys to remember lean muscle is your metabolism and your metabolism will burn your fat so anytime we're talking about building lean muscle do not run away from it take it from me (laughs) yeah i had to learn the hard way okay so okay okay but i'm you and I are, don't live in life in extremes where it's either an all in or all out or, or nothing. So how have you learned to kind of implement alcohol into your life? Obviously you still do it. So what are some things, techniques that you've adjusted to? Hmm. Um, I think like just going out, I feel like I always, I need to have something in my hands. Otherwise guys are like, can I get you a drink? Like, let me, oh, come on, take a shot with me and all that. So I usually just like, I'll have a soda water and a lime and I feel fine. Like I noticed I feel fine. I think also a lot of times we want alcohol to really feel awkward or weird. So I think part of it is just being comfortable in yourself too. And like, if you notice like, oh, I feel awkward, I feel weird. Instead of like going and getting a drink, just be like, why do I feel weird? Okay, can I loosen up a little bit? And like, just try and do it yourself. You know, that doesn't always fix it 100%, but. Yeah, what I, something I've been implementing recently is, um, let's say I go on vacation and you know, when you're on vacation, you're really loose, you're hanging out with a lot of people, it's social, you're drinking a lot more. And then when I get home, my fiance and I do this quite a bit. We'll be like, all right, month detox. Yeah. And we'll just take a month and yeah. just really feel like almost kind of a little competition, but it's fun and allows us to kind of really get back on track. So it could be something like that too. Yeah. Maybe you do. I also think about, again, I'm always asking the why and if I go to the gym and have like a really good workout, I'm feeling like super proud of myself. I don't want to drink because I know I'm canceling out my workout. So I don't feel like I, I'm more proud of myself from the workout and feeling good. And I associate feeling good with the healthy lifestyle that drinking now isn't a feel good for me. And so it's kind of just switching the association with it because I think about yeah, this could be fun right now. Maybe I'd be like funnier on the dance floor tonight. Um, but I know what I'm going to feel like tomorrow. And that feels worse to me than feeling awkward on the dance floor. <laughs> and it's hard to get rid of those immediate gratification yeah. techniques, right? Because right there, what she's doing is she's substituting a a longer gratitude for just that short term gratitude. So same thing. Um, and in order to get there, a lot of the actions are followed by a feeling. And a lot of those feelings are followed by a yeah. thought. And so really just being able to go into a place in your mind of knowing that you are enough, you're whole and, and all these amazing things that you are, instead of having these false beliefs or limiting yeah. beliefs can lead to end up obviously those short term immediate gratification tools yeah. is at least what I've seen with the med- immediate gratification. Right. If you think about it, like all the three we just hit on was getting enough sleep, reducing stress and alcohol. All of those things I feel like we lean on like they've been a crutch for me in the past, but you have to realize what's serving you and what isn't. So not getting enough sleep. We do that because I don't know, we have kids we're chasing around and then we want time with our partner or you stay up late doing work or whatever it is that's preventing you from sleeping you think that is helping you 
But when you realize how detrimental not getting enough sleep is, it actually inhibits your performance during the day. You're not getting those things done very well, et cetera. So you have to think of sacrificing your sleep as actually being more painful than the things that you're doing in its place. Um, I would say same thing with coffee. I wanted coffee because I was tired from not getting enough sleep. So then I go to coffee and I'm like, oh, I work so much better like this. But then you crash at two and you need more and then you're nervous and it, it just builds up. So I think of coffee. I'm like, sometimes I'll still have coffee, you know, like, yeah, I just don't use it as a it's just not a crutch anymore. And it's not three cups a day anymore. You know, it's like maybe once or twice a week and those replacements in the meantime. So I think of it again as like, is what's helping me? What's serving me? What isn't? What's causing actually something to be detrimental? And then I move towards a thing that's better. Same thing with alcohol. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, I think I'm more silly. I'm probably funnier, a lot funnier <laughs> when I'm drinking. But then I'm I'm not fun the next day, you know? Yeah. And again, when we're bringing it all back to these are the things that if you've been working out, if you've been doing the diet and nutrition and it doesn't seem to be working, it could very well be these things that are just slowing it down so it feels like it's happening all at snail pace because these things are like having you pump the brakes on it. So when I also think of it in terms of that, I'm like, gosh, well, what's really going to make me the happiest? It's not being weird on a dance floor. It's feeling really good. It's fighting aging. It's feeling good in a bathing suit. It's, you know, yeah. liking how I feel and look. Hopefully you like this video with me and Cindy on talking about hormones. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe and I'll see you in the other podcast episodes. So I have really never stuck with anything for more than six months until I found Booty Bands Barbell. It's life changing. The progress over perfection mindset has been so life changing. Have self love and to have self worth. I just do the 10 minutes and I'm already reaping the benefits. The workouts are fun and that they're effective. I have seen great results that I never thought I'd ever see. I love it because I'm keeping the weight off. We help hold each other accountable as they commit to our goals. Booty Bands and Barbells has really changed my life for the better. I have to be real with you. The past six months really took a toll on me and my body. I felt incredibly stressed, isolated. After being a good 12 to 13 pounds heavier, I said that's it, I'm gonna make healthy choices. And I'm happy to tell you today that I am actually down 15 pounds. I feel amazing. I feel like I lost fat and put on muscle. I have a lot more energy. So it's never too late to start. You can take control again. Thanks, Booty Band Nation.